Jeff, have you got your makeup done? We're recording. <laughs> yes, it is fantabulous. Thank you, Matt. You're so. Oh, I love you. You look uh, not as fabulous as me, but still pretty darn good. Nah, I'm kidding. You're fabulous. Fabulous. And on that note, oh. hi, everybody. Overall, congratulations on also being fabulous, darling. Hope you enjoyed that cold start. Thanks to Matthew Lang and, and Jeff Allity. Um, welcome to session two of our uh, Let's Play Mass Effect Collision. I am here with uh, our players. Mistiani hopefully will be joining us shortly. So I do want to try to ask the uh, warm-up question. I think this is something that we need to, at least you guys need to start thinking about because that will help you uh, in role-playing the rest of at least what's going on for the beginning of this uh, of this session is um, if you guys remember from the previous session in session one. Um, Next time, a Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> just, just before. Be fantastic. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's fine. Just before Elias took the stage, there was that talk show that was going on, and people were discussing synthesis. And I was trying very hard to show different points of view of synthesis, which actually, um, which actually, uh, is also many of the arguments for and against synthesis that real players have been making in the forums. You know, Shepard was playing God. Well, Shepard's allowed to make those decisions because Shepard was the one who actually survived, you know, up the crucible to make those decisions. So he was entitled, he or she was entitled to that and all that good stuff. So I guess my question is to you is, um, once your characters realize that this whole synthesis thing happened, at least in this parallel universe, what are your characters' personal feelings about synthesis, especially given where you guys are originally from. With the discussion of, you know, how everyone would feel about the synthesis, I think Sepia would actually kind of be more or less on board, because in our previous session we were discussing which endings, which each right. was prefer, and I kind of went through that mind process of, um, I think Sepia would prefer the green ending, so her finding out that there's the synthesis <laughs> thing, I think she'd be all, all right, but no, knowing that knowing that Sisepia is coming from a universe where she's where where Shepard chose control, mm. she thinks that she thinks that it. I imagine the be better. I imagine the alternative is probably better than to like having seeing all these giant like Reaper things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think yeah, she'd be. I think she'd... giant Reaper things in synthesis. They're still there. <laughs> are they still there? In synthesis? Yes, still they there. are still there. I don't know, they're still there walking amongst everyone, giving out knowledge and helping yeah. people. It's just, just they are... No, it's that with them. No, there's still that, that um, communication thing that Sipia would have. Being able to kind of that... I, people being able to understand where she's coming from and being able... Because I guess that's what the synthesis thing is, that they're able to kind of connect. Mm -hmm. And I think that would... That Sipia would like that, being able to be understood as a biotic in a Turian society. Yeah, I was going to ask about how she's coping as a biotic in Turin society. <laughs> um, could be better. <laughs> uh, I'm currently replaying Omega on Mass Effect 3, so... <laughs> uh, I'm just... just go ahead. Again. Yeah, so that's my answer for the question. Just to clarify, uh, yes, there is there are Reapers in both Control and, and the Synthesis. The difference is in Control, the... All of the Reapers are controlled by one entity, that one entity being Shepard's Shepherd. consciousness. Whereas in Synthesis, nobody's really controlling the Reapers. They're just helping because they no longer have a purpose anymore since, you know, the, the well, that, synthetics and organics. Is... Their purpose is... The synthetics and orga organics are now one and the same. So they're helping them, I guess reach the preserving piece. organic life is now not quite the same thing because there's Correct. no there's no cycle of synthetic organic wiping each other out anymore right supposedly so they're still supposedly. trying to <laughs> right so they are still preserving Matt, yeah. Matt's correct. They're still preserving or like life in the universe. It's now life is actually not supposedly at odds 
according to the according to their theory or their program. Yeah. So, um, I can answer that because I actually thought about I actually thought about this when the uh, when I was thinking about how I was going to deal with the whole uh, talk show going on in the background of Elise's head. Um, and the funny thing is, he he doesn't have strong feelings about it either way. At least not in so far as whether Shepard made the right choice or whether Shepard was entitled to make a choice because I think the way that he'd approach it is, look, the only reason we're able to sit around and talk about it on a talk show or judge him for his actions, assuming we have a male Shepard in all three universes, um, is because he actually went and made a choice. We can all sit back and judge him now because we have the luxury of being alive to do so. So... I'm sorry, what, if your preference is for something else, maybe you should have done what he did. So if your choices are since the synthesis or death, pick one, really, <laughs> and get over it. <laughs> Fair enough. I like that. I like that point. <clears throat> Dylan, did you want to go next? Sure. Um, I think with Sync, uh, just from being in control, uh, he kind of, I feel like he kind of resents the Reapers just in a small way just because how they felt as organic life was a threat just because of all the knowledge they were gaining and evolutions they were overcoming. Um, I feel like when he finds out what universe he's in, he'll have mixed feelings about it like because he, he wants to meld humanity and uh, our, you know, organic and synthetic life together because him himself, he, he he's technically, I guess, both parts, just not on a, I don't know, cellular level, however, Correct. You know, however, however that works. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think, I think he'll, I think in the end what he'd like to do is take this and bring it back to his own universe because kind of like the old guy was saying uh, that he had met in first session, how, how uh, the Reapers could just kind of, I guess, maybe snap and go back to destroying our life again. He feels as though in the control universe, they're, they're most under control, if that makes sense. Like, they have, yeah. there's something, they're not just free roaming around doing right. whatever they want. They have something that's leading them, right. keeping them there's, under lock and key. Yes, uh, yes, exactly what I was going to say. In the control, you at least, there's that concept of the Reapers are on a leash, and that leash being Shepard's consciousness, whereas in this, in, in synthesis, that's not necessarily the case. Right. So. Okay. Jeff, do you have a thought? Um, once Anar figures out that the Reapers are still alive and everybody's been put into synthesis, he's actually going to be excruciatingly angry. The reason being is because... Um, uh, well, let me just explain that Anar doesn't really like the normal Hanar doctrine. He's upset that they're all samey. Nobody can tell them apart. They're always so polite. They have no backbone. He's really upset about that. And he was he's actually been trying to uplift the Hanar people from like a, a small rebel guerrilla faction, but the only problem is is that he couldn't get enough members or that they just wouldn't stay with him long enough and he just felt like he ultimately failed. And then he went off on his own. For other reasons that I won't disclose right now. And honestly, Synthesis would just do everything that he already hated. It would make everybody the same. Mm -hmm. It would make them feel the same. Barely anyone would be unique. And that's what he was already fighting against, and now it's even worse. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the universe is the same. There's no difference between synthetics. And not to mention, he's going to be surprised when he sees synthetics because they've been destroyed for like three years. And <laughs> he absolutely despised the, the Reapers and wish he could have fought against them. So he's going to be upset when he sees them too. Uh, very cool. As for seeing everybody glowing green, he's already going to be very confused about that at first. And once he figures it out, I'm not 100% sure how he reacts. I just know he won't be happy. I can promise that. Good to know. It's good to know that going into this. So I thought that was a very important question to ask. Well, one of the interesting things of a synthesis is I'm, I had have to replay the ending to double check it, but wasn't there the whole thing that everything that Shepard was was somehow mixed in with the whole synthesis thing that burst out to everybody? Yes, correct. So now everyone so... wears ammo underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. They all have similar fashion tastes. Yeah, there is there is that, and again... Oh, wait, no, he didn't wear camo underwear, I forgot. Kasumi only thought he did, or she. 
<laughs> All right, never mind. Never mind. Maybe, maybe he or she did, but we just never Grand saw them. Loom the has gone up 20 <laughs> points in stock since then. A lion standard <laughs> issue underwear. Everyone well. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone wants to end seven armor now. They can't explain it. They just love it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there and all, a and all of a sudden, every store is people's favorite store on the Citadel. Let's <laughs> <laughs> run again. <laughs> yes. True. Depends on which playthrough we got. Um, I'm Sasepia Altus, and this is my favorite store in the Citadel. Why did I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> Part of me is hoping that he was a bit of a renegade in some of these uh, diverse um, uh, mm. uh, universes than the other. I think that she would actually be a little bit curious, because okay. this might be a little bit of a new start for her race in general, and for her personal in that case. If she, she would realize that she was affected, or if others were affected by it, she would be interested to see how it has affected her, her people, and in general the galaxy. Okay. Did things turn out for the better or not? Exactly. <laughs> well, I guess there's also a question uh, as to whether the or not the was saved or not. Cured. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly yeah. what I was saying, dude. <laughs> she would be interested to see what has happened to her people. I'm, I'm also sure curious who's, who's ruling the Krogan Ho world. Is it Rex or Reeve? Yeah. That we'll is also interesting. Uh, yes, I know who. <laughs> You'll find out. When it becomes relevant, I'll let you know. When it becomes relevant, oh, okay. I know who. Oh, no, <laughs> okay. Yes. The universe is definitely doomed. <laughs> I have a big chart. I have a big chart, which I'm not showing you right now, but it basically has red, blue, green. And list of is it like a flow chart? It's not a flow chart. That's a different thing. But I have a chart where I have red, blue, green, and then on the left hand side is all of the characters, PCs, NPCs, and then I have notes, red, blue, green. I have notes on each one for each character. I just going dead. So yeah. Oh, I know. I've thought about that. So you'll find out. <laughs> I was going to say, though, any thoughts on the fourth? Option <laughs> at the crucible. Uh, I think they wouldn't be alive. Everyone dies. Oh, well, everyone wait. would be dying because it would take um, them at least. A, they would say it would take at least a decade to to harvest Earth. Actually, I do have a oh, question really? for Dylan. Dylan, how long has um, Sink? You know, not you know, no spoilers, but how long has he been like part synthetic? Um, it's it's if been a, right around the around us. the time around the time his wife died. Now so it's more than three, five years. Oh, dude. I would say about that five means years. you're dead in my. That means you're dead in mine and Arkara's story. Because you would have been destroyed along with the rest of the synthetics. Yep. There oh, is boy. no sink in the red universe. Oh, that's depressing. What's depressing is that well, you're dead in another from a gunshot to the head. You know, Hark, I was just kind of wondering too if if uh, <laughs> I was wondering if. I was wondering if Sync would ever see himself in the Synthesis universe and maybe even like a, a, a Sync that made different choices and maybe his wife is still, I don't know. I'm sure you're wondering that, yes. I'm sure you are. <laughs> I think we're all wondering that. I'm sure you're yeah. yeah, sure wondering that. <laughs> Not in red, though. You're dead. I don't know. Uh, I imagine in red, I guess I'm, a, I'm apparently in red, I'm a, um, what is it, a Blue Suns? In the red ending, or the red universe, I'm a sun's red or blue sun. Allegedly a blue sun spy, according to right. Shia Slazim, according to her. Hmm. Yes. I wonder if that would affect pie in your pants, Matt. During um, the, the destroy one. Mean? Like, um, if he's yes. synthetic and and you're it also would, existing in my universe, I wonder if he would have been destroyed yeah. along with the rest. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, my understanding is that he would have been. Yes. Probably. His understanding is he would have been. That's and I I actually explained that at the end of the last his last uh, episode uh, the last session is that true yes is that Elias knows he should have been but for some reason he wasn't so what does that mean uh, so what does that mean about Pi I haven't synthesized so it suggests that if we're extrapolating it it suggests he's from the blue universe <laughs> maybe suggests but maybe not there could be something else at play. 
It's right. fun watching you guys the theorize the these things. It's fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if if we're going on extrapolation, Red Universe Pi probably wouldn't exist. Um, I do find it quite interesting that um, unless Elias meets someone else before Rain shows up, and Rain shows up and they have a chat, and he might, well, you know, there's probably another universe where you want. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> On a side um, thought, I'm, I can't wait to see Bravo's team and see what they've been through. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Big game next month. Right? You guys, like, recorded one week ago, didn't you? Yep. And I was oh, going to say, uh, some of the questions that you were just asking slash wondering about, yeah, Bravo's team already found out. <laughs> oh, Bravo's team already found out. It's so crazy. So it's out. like, <laughs> the entire time I was like, oh, yeah, but this is the part that main squad doesn't know. <laughs> I, I tell them that quite a few times. Like, yeah, they get to know a lot of stuff that you guys don't. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's cool. so legit. Like that is so cool. <laughs> uh, I can't wait. But that's okay because there's a few things that there's a few things I was telling Matt that uh, Bravo Squad uh, weren't understanding because they didn't get uh, the whole parallel universe thing. So they're like, right. wait, that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, wait till you watch Main Squad. <laughs> Watch Main Squad, it'll yeah. make sense. <laughs> it'll make sense later. It'll make sense later. Just right now, just trust me. That this all fits. This all fits. This whole thing is wibbly wobbly tiny wobbly. Yeah. That was sort of the what I was trying to go for with this campaign, is the nature of the campaign, where you can watch each session, you can watch each squad individually, but they really, things fit, when, they, when you fit them all together, like, it, it makes a lot of sense, so... Can I have a Sonic screwdriver? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got one sitting in a case oh. in the hallway. <laughs> so, there are some th a few things that I forgot to mention in the last session, so I will mention to them now. Um, Anar, for you, um, the way I envision the way that you... Um, utilize your mech suit. I kind of envisioned that you sort of carry it around in a briefcase, a lot like Iron Man, <laughs> a lot like Iron Man, <laughs> so that wherever you are, it's accessible. What am I, um, Bond villain? I'm walking yeah, around with a suit on the face. Which well, because my intention... Girlfriend. My intention... Be a okay, so I walked in <laughs> a briefcase yeah. and a top hat, monocle, mustache, tie... <laughs> You've got a beautiful like a girl right next to you, too. You, you've got everything else. You might as well have the suitcase. Man, Anar is pimp. My intention was for you to have access to your briefcase when you move to the other world. I did not want you to be without it. So so the uh, way I'm explaining this time, it... This time, all this time I was going to think it was in a, in a hangar or something. That's okay. I'll do that later. Luck, or, luckily, thanks. I stalled Suscepia for you so you can sneak that suitcase in. <laughs> if it's in a briefcase, <laughs> RP gamer, that means your character's a lot smarter than I actually originally envisioned. So thank you, Hark, for that. <laughs> or who? Or not? Or well, I thought maybe Chris was the one who did that. Chris is the, definitely the one who did that because you think Anar would be able to like figure that stuff out. Yeah, probably I while, it was like Chris. Chris was building a mech. Uh, Anar probably off to the side playing with guns. Pew 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 pew. Anar, right. get over here and help me out already. Fine, whatever. Hey, Jeff. Oh, next question. I was, I was going to say, with, with that, Jeff, um, huh? what happens when the suitcase gets damaged? Mm, <laughs> it's not oh, going to. <laughs> I was just thinking that, too. Like, um, if I can't believe it happen. Well, just... maybe I'll turn it into a backpack later. Maybe. I don't know. So, so the, the explanation that I was going to give um, is that, if you remember, Trissy actually works at the, <laughs> she works at the arena. She works at the convention center, so I think she was able to pull some strings to allow you to bring said to bring your suitcase with you. So, so that's why you how that conversation went. Hey, honey. Yes, Anar. Could you please bring my mech suit to the theater for me? <laughs> why do you need that? Are you gonna start shooting out the place? Do you really not like that Elias guy that bad? <laughs> no, it's just because yeah. in case someone tries to attack me in the middle of it. Oh, okay. Hey, I guess I could do that. That's where we. No. <laughs> Actually, what I what I was picturing was if you guys seen the Incredibles, honey, yeah. Yeah. where's, uh, where's my, my super suit? suit? <laughs> <laughs> I put it where away. Where's my super suit? You tell me where it is now, woman. We are in the theater right now, and uh, one of the things that also happened 
um, I forgot to mention, Jeff, is that before the portal appeared in front of you and sucked you into this other reality, your suitcase actually started to... Um, something about your suitcase was reacting. Like your suitcase was starting to glow, which is not a feature that you've seen before, at least not in suitcase form. And um, the... So that so just before the portal, the green portal opened, your suitcase was reacting. Oh, is it changing with the universes? Oh man, I wonder if it's gonna look different. So yes, you now have mood lighting. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know if it's a flying saucer and I'm going in at Dr. Wiley style. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well that might be. It just might be an invisible flying saucer. Yeah. Shortly after all of you guys have transported where you are being transported to the green universe, there's one more thing that happens. In the center of the audience, there is one more... Um, think uh, the beginning of Terminator when the characters oh. appear, like, the, like there's all this like, electricity coming on, and then the there's portal opens. There's not gonna opens. be someone naked there, is No, it? there isn't gonna be someone <laughs> naked there. But like, there's like, all there's like all this electricity, or, or it looks like electricity, rays of energy um, streaming out in the center of the room. This big giant purple portal appears. People who are sitting in, this, in the seats there disappear when this portal opens up in them. And out pop, these things. What is it? Oh my lord! Is that, that really a Reaper Volus? That's yeah, a Reaper Volus. And it's Ew. a boy eyes. And it's holding a bomb. They got these four legs and this umbilical what, got the cord. They're gonna be flying around saying, suck it down. Yeah, they've got these umbilical cord looking things coming from their chest that's attached to like some sort of a some sort of a button. That doesn't look very, it's very cool. Um, well, it might look cool to you. And there oh is the Warp Universe. Um, you it. You it. Oh, they came out in perfect formation. <laughs> yes, they came out in perfect formation. Uh, the, the people around don't react to it right away. However, those that are right next to the um, next to the portal are either stunned, confused, they're not sure, is this part of the show? Because I don't remember, you know, anything about this on the reviews. And <laughs> before you guys have a chance to react, because I think you guys are still disoriented from what's been going on, okay. one of the boluses actually uh, takes, uh, uh, forms an omni-blade in one of their arms and drives through this poor, uh, this poor lady over here, right through her no! chest, and she screams. It is at this point that at least the people surrounding that area are realize this is not part of the show, and they start to panic and start to get out of their seats and run. Except for one guy in the balcony who's like a critic, and he says, nah, they're just going for ratings. <laughs> yes. And the, two, the two old men. <laughs> like <I'm not> <laughs> oh! What was this uh, contest called? Uh, Citadel, uh, Star of the Citadel. Citadel Idol, yeah. Citadel, uh, Citadel Idol. Citadel got talent. Citadel's like, got oh, talent. Trying Sorry. to combine it with that other show, Survivor. Oh. Figures. <laughs> Such a ploy. I should have done that for my show. All right. So all of these people are are trying to make a run for it. It is at this point that I will let you guys now roll initiative. Sync. We're gonna start yes. the initiative at you. So this is how. Okay. If any of you have played D&D, Pathfinder, the way that the turns work is totally different. It's, it's weird, but I want to try it the way that the rules say that it's supposed to happen. So the way it works is, starting with a person with the first initiative, that person declares how many actions they want to take this round. Um, and every action that they take that is beyond one action, I'm going to let you use a move action for free, essentially. So if you want to do something besides move your movement speed, um, for every additional action beyond one that you want to do, uh, all of your rolls during that round gets a minus three penalty. So if you do 
two actions, every single roll that you do gets a minus three penalty. If you do three actions, everything gets a minus six penalty, and so on. Okay, so that's, um, so you can take as many actions as you want, but the more actions you take that round, within reason, I won't let you take a certain number of actions if it doesn't make sense that you could do that in a round. <laughs> but you can take as many actions as you want, but you, the more actions you do, the more penalty you're going to have in your alt rolls all throughout that entire round. Five second, they have five second rounds. Five second, okay, five second uh -huh. rounds. Yeah. Five second rounds. So, uh, anything that I think you can do in five seconds, you, you know, within reason. Um, so what happens is, starting with Sync, he's going to say how many actions he wants to do, then I'll go to the next person, then I go to the next person, then I get to the next person. Then once everybody uh, has... that lets us strategize okay. better, too. Yeah, exactly. Really that lets us strategize better. So once everybody has said how many actions I'm taking, then we go back to Sync and we actually play. We actually play the mm -hmm. round. So, um, now with strategizing, just remember, like, you can't discuss things with each other yeah, in mid battle. Right. Yeah, but so, can we pick targets when it gets to our turn? Like if we were attacking. You can pick targets, but you can't metagame. You guys can't that's necessarily know that's what we're doing. I'll shoot that one if you shoot that one. <laughs> yeah, you can't be like, you shoot that one, I shoot that one. Unless it gets to your turn, and during your turn, you actually say something to the other person. So. Yeah, uh, that makes it. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so I'm going to be very careful about, you know, making sure you guys aren't metagaming in that way. So let's, Appreciate so it. we'll give that a try. So starting with Sync, Dylan, declare how many actions you want to take right now. Yeah, would Sync even notice these people right now? Like the, the, Volar, the Volar guy, Volus guys? Or would he be more focused on the people with their green glowing eyes? I will say I like that... He'd be more focused. I, I will say that enough time has passed such that you have managed to get over the initial shock of A, um, Trissy not be, oh, not Trissy. A, Meridi not being next to you, and B, everybody has glowing eyes. You've had the chance to at least recover from that initial shock in order to notice. Now, now on top of that, these bolus, bolus husks are coming out. I would, I would like to take two actions. Okay. Well, you don't uh, have to tell me what they are. First off, right he now. wants. Unless oh, you want to tell me. Okay, okay. I guess for because you guys are still learning. If you want to just tell me what you're doing, I'll let you do that. But just remember that. This knowledge is not shared amongst the rest of the characters, so go ahead. I'm sorry okay. to bother you, okay, well, but um, when did we quiet. decide a uh, square equal to meters? Two. Two? two meters. Okay. Excellent. Oh, a Perfect. square is two meters? I've been treating them as one. Oh, I'm happy to go with one. I thought you. I thought we said two. One works yeah. fine for me. Because I one think in... Because I, I think... Oh, that's right, because it's one per seat. One yeah, one per seat. Per, yeah, yeah, one right. meter per seat. So, yeah, I'm just been going with one. Yeah, we're going one. Sorry, my bad. Otherwise, those I'm are two actions. Yeah, otherwise the seats would be really lit, would be really large. I, I, I basically am basing on a, off of one person can fit in a meter square. One person, one medium-sized person can fit in a meter square. Sesepia, <laughs> how many actions do you want to do? Um... Uh, is there a dead uh, corpse right next to me? There is not. There is not? Okay. I was running because if there, shot. yes, there is no corpse next to you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and if your universe, you weren't shot at. I don't okay. think. Okay. Unless um, there's another power in your universe shooting at your head. Okay. I'd probably uh, do two. Probably. Okay. Two actions. Search. Probably would be like searching, looking at the things, and probably. Okay. Uh, calling, calling all officers, uh, officers on. The area okay. to kind of get to the thing and like the officers closest to the stage, try to get Elias out of here. Okay. Um, how long has it been since I tried to fire my weapon? Um, I would it? say it's been yeah. about. I think that it's been about 30 seconds because you, you as soon as you okay. fired your weapon, that's when the weird thing happened, and then when the weird yeah. thing stopped, you notice everybody in the audience has glowing eyes. So. so I've started to get my bearings again. Then. You're starting to get your bearings, oh, and you probably have become less concerned about your target and more concerned about what just happened yes. to me and where am I and what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, despite the fact that Anna doesn't or uh, Akara doesn't know about Anar, we could flank them technically because I'm on the other side of the arena. Technically, yes. Well, uh, uh, she's on the rocks though. Don't she's, she's on the rocks. She's she's yeah. That's it. Oof. I'm not gonna <laughs> Don't break your Don't kneecaps coming down. <laughs> you can just land on one of the bullets and just squash it. So, yeah. so Arkara, 
So, Arkara, um, how many actions did you want to take this round? Uh, how exposed am I up in the rafters? You're not very exposed at all. I don't think anyone notices that you're up there right now. Yeah. Um, and I think I... If you're wondering if you have any cover, coming... You definitely have some cover from people firing up to you if they notice yeah. that you're up there, but there's no reason for anyone to think that you're up there. Yeah. So. Um, In other words, you can run away really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not my problem. <laughs> is, um, is aiming an actual action? Yes. I, aiming yes, is aiming an is an actual sniper. action. Yeah. Yes. Then and I you would have to do it, otherwise you do much less damage. Yeah, exactly. Then I would probably... Oh. Take two turns? That? Okay. It's special rules for sniper rifles. It, it's oh. only for sniper rifles. Okay, okay, good. good, good, good. Okay. So you're going to take two actions. Anar, how many actions are you going to take? Uh, that depends. Is me getting up and putting on the suit going to cost me anything? Uh, I would... Uh, putting in the suit would probably take at least a round. At least. A round. So, then I'm going to have to spend my first round doing that. Yeah. Also, with a minor role playing as well. Because after that, I'm actually going to activate uh, Overkill and try and take out as many as I can early so they can't hurt as many people. Yeah. And just so you know, the extra action that you get from Overkill is a bonus action. So yes, it doesn't count going... as it doesn't count as two actions. It's so. gonna give me three attacks altogether without any incurring any penalties because okay. of uh, how high my range uh, okay. is for it. It takes two rounds to cool down, however, okay. and I'm still susceptible to wild eyes. Elias, I need to get away from wild eyes. You are a question. I... Yep. Yes. At this, at, at the moment of at the start of initiative, you realize something's wrong. So yep. it's it's dawned on you. So what is your question? Uh, my question is one: um, Would security try to hustle me out really quickly? Most likely. And, and two: <laughs> Where the hell would my weapons be? Because I probably don't have them on me. Probably not. Probably, probably backstage. Probably backstage. So I'm uh, gonna have to take my move action to get backstage and probably get armed. So I don't think I can take more than one realistically because I'm gonna have to get there first. Right. Do I already have my suitcase, by the way? Um, yes. I said you did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. With move, can you use it, an action to move faster, or yes. is that not an option in this game? Yes. So if you want to use your action to move again, you can do that. I will probably do that. Okay. So how many... Because I doubt they're just sitting in the wings. They're not um, just sitting so in the wings. Serious. I would say yeah, you would yeah, probably, probably have to use... I would say you would probably have to use about three moves, three movement speed to get to your weaponry, to get to your stuff. And so what I guess I would have you do is roll a dexterity check to make sure that you didn't like trip or something, or, or to determine, I would, I would, I would, I would, the more, more you would want to, the faster you would want to move, then the more I would ask you to roll, to move yep. that fast. So I would, I, um, I think it'll take you three movement speeds to get to your stuff. Um, I'll take two actions then. Okay. All right. That means I think everybody except for everyone except for Anar is taking two actions, which means anyone, everyone gets a minus three penalty to all of their rolls. I, think, I just I got a roll play this my round. But next round, I'm going to bring on the hurt. Communication's not counting as an action. It is if you're activating your radio. Oh, okay. If you're just, like, calling out to someone, that's free. Yeah, okay, then I'm activating. If you're actually, okay, so... like, getting on a radio, contacting someone, that's an action. Well, isn't right. your call oh. more or less inbuilt? I'm, I'm just asking I would, know what yours is. If you want to argue that, I can probably... I can probably argue that that would be one action but yeah. you wouldn't be able to do anything else besides what you were also already going to do. Searching, I would let you search and communicate as one action. Okay. 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 Cool. Cool, cool. I'll do that. That's, that'll just be my. Which is fine because I don't think that's going to require you to roll anything. I'm sorry. The searching it does require you to roll. It'll be fine. That's yeah. fine. Okay. So now that we've done all that, we're going to start with sync. So sync. So the way. So now what happens is sync takes his first action. Everybody goes takes their first action. Then everybody takes their second action. And then we just keep going until if somebody add a third action, then we go back to that person and they take their third action. 
If somebody had a fourth action, then we just gotcha. keep going down the line. So everyone does one action, and then we go to the next. So Sync, what is your first action? Sync would like to use his cybernetic eye to scan one of the Volus husks. Okay. Roll me... So would that be... I think it's because they're white magic. I, I wouldn't... <laughs> no, I want. What could I roll a te technical electronic devices? Because he's using his eye to scan, I'm, or not much as C. I'm fine are. with that. I'm or, fine with that. Or would you? Well, do that, that would that would be a scan, but it wouldn't necessarily tell you much about them. But he can at least take time to know. study them. That's true. Like find some weak points. Or Go ahead and roll me a technical. I'll let you roll a technical. So is it? Is it my second one? I'm sorry? Is my first action a minus three, or is it my second one that's a minus Everything's three? a minus three. All of it. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Once you decide how many actions you're taking, you're taking penalties to everything. If you if you went over one action. I got you. Okay. I'll, I'll just, this is a minus three roll right here. Correct. So it's an 11? Okay. Uh, four. Uh, no, I, 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 you already it's supposed to be a plus six. Oh, so I you already made the subtraction. Two. Okay. Dylan, you're, you're, yes. you're trying to study these creatures carefully, and you notice that the way that they are behaving, um, they, they, because all of them are holding on to this controller around their, uh, in their, in their hand from, like, the umbilical cord looking thing, you believe it's probably a good idea to remove that controller somehow, either by either by snapping it off or chopping it off. Chopping off the connection might be helpful. And in, oh, in, in character, really sync would say, so in character, would say, I don't think these guys are invited to this convention. Okay. <laughs> Seppi, you're your no. next. Take your first action, Sasepia. Uh, that would be the search. Roll me a yeah. So roll me your. That could be perception, I guess. Perception search. Yeah, I did roll. Oh, roll. Did roll. nice. Uh, yeah, nice. Ooh. Okay. Good job. So man. number one, um, Sasepia, you realize the same thing that Sync realizes. It's that you believe whatever the trigger is um, is the key to a lot of their abilities, a lot of whatever it is that they do to threaten people. Um, the other... Am I able to see anyone up in the rafters? <laughs> if it's that high of a switch? You do see, you do finally the see... Wrong, didn't need a cybernetic guy to do this. You do also, <laughs> yes, with the 23, you do also see somebody up in the rafters, and it looks like a Krogan with a sniper okay. rifle. It looks like and a Krogan guess, with a sniper rifle. Then, then when I'm communicating, it's like um, telling all the officers to get in, and also to, um, I'm also thinking, sniper on the roof. Could she be connected to the? Um, yeah. The bank heist? I think that's very reasonable. Also, also tell the officers to try to apprehend the Krogan up on the rafters. Yep. Make sure to bring her, bring her, in, bring her in alive. Yep. Bring her in alive. <laughs> bring her in alive for questioning. The response on the radio says. And make uh, sure that Elias get, get Elias off the stage. Any officers that are on the stage, get them off. Copy that, Officer Altis is the response. Okay. That's the end of my turn, then. Okay. <laughs> Arkara! Your turn. Arkara, take your first action. Well, she's, she sees these husk things and have a few flashbacks and just aims the sniper rifle down uh, their way. Anar the Hanar, you're next. You're activating your suit, right? Uh, not quite yet. Um... During when they were just appearing, he's probably going to look around very, very fast for uh, Trissy. He's going to, he's going to not really yell because he's, you know, he's a hand art, but he's going to try to say, Trissy, Trissy. And then as soon as he sees the Volus, he's going to growl, you know. War know cry. <laughs> no, he's probably not going to war cry, but. Okay. It's like, <laughs> This Everyone's one's not like losing them. anyone else. <laughs> and he pulls out his. He starts like pulling off his top hat and his um, 
mustache, <gasps> his bow tie, ripping him off, throwing the monocle down. It's like Not it's like again. it's like the hoops are coming off. It's like the, the hoops are coming yeah. off. And then he's pulling, out the, he's pulling off the gloves. <laughs> and he's he's going to throw it into the air, and he's going to hop in the middle while it starts transforming around. Nice. I will re go ahead. That's You're going to see this, form, this transforming suit that looks Krogan-esque, but it's got blue, no, wait, I'm sorry, not blue, red and black battle paint. It's got tags. It even says, strange reason, Nuke Stomp for 64 on the back. Nice. Spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be like a happy sign on one of the shoulders. It's just going to be a lot of decals, bullets, and Which... scuffs. This, this is one beat-up armor. And as soon as he gets in, it activates the um, augmented voice. A uh, back hatch is going to open, and a, an extending like uh, rack is going to form on the back. Think Borderlands 2. And it's going to pull off a, an Avenger assault rifle and pull it forward. <clears throat> and then he's going to growl at the uh, bullets. This one needs something to vent its rage. Sorry, I didn't think about that. Very it's beautiful cool. imagery. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And he's ready to go. It, awesome. After he caught it. Awesome imagery, Jeff. Ping for me what direction you're throwing the suit at. What direction uh, you're throwing probably the Probably forward so he doesn't land on a chair. So ping it. Uh, ping it for me. There. That direction? Okay. Yeah. That's behind your seat, isn't it? It is? That's behind yeah. the yeah. seat. Oh, okay. The stage so, is in front. The stage is. All right, then add him hop in the seat at the same time while throwing the uh, <laughs> the suitcase. So he's so he's throwing it behind the seat. Yes, and uh, it'll land on his mech feet on the other side, and then say all the cool stuff he just did. Okay. <laughs> so you are now okay. So you move over there. Uh, okay. Roll me a mechanical, please. Sure. So I can make sure you actually are able to do this in one round. If you roll too uh, low, then you won't be able to do all of that in Can I add my mech operation? Yes, please. Okay. No wild die, thank you. Uh, 15. That's enough. That is a wild die. That, that is enough. Six. That is a wild die. And you roll also get to roll another. Actually, go ahead and roll another 6. Yeah, roll another d6. Yeah, how does that work? I saw there's a 1, 6, 6. Critical fail and critical the loss. It's always the last die. That's it's always the whatever last. is the last oh, die. Minus, get rid of that too. It's 5. So 20. So 20. With a 20, with a 20, NR, not only were you able to do everything that you described in style, but you were able to get into your suit in record time that you can now fire a single shot. I will give you an extra single shot. However, at a minus three, at a minus three penalty. Ooh, I really hope I don't watch this. Or I don't want to have a, um, I don't want an overheated weapon at the very beginning of the fight. I didn't buy any other guns. So you're aiming for that one, all right? Yes, yeah, so I'm aiming for that one. Oh, wait, would I accidentally shoot that guy in front of him? Just don't botch. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I really oh hope I don't. Gosh. You know what, for safety yeah. reasons, I'm going to shoot at this one instead, if that's cool. Which one? Oh, okay. I don't see it. Oh, I see uh, which one. Yeah, I see one. That one, one that's yes, right. that's that fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go. All right. Straight oh. ahead. Go ahead. Why's and then someone runs, it, someone runs in front of your bullet. <laughs> Better not. <laughs> Better not. Oh. Uh, roll your um, attack roll, Jeff. Yes, it's um. Holy crap! It's plus twenty one. That's going to hit. Roll for damage. I have to make sure I don't miss because if I get a one and a wild die, it's going to either be a miss or over. So I have Correct. to still roll. No! Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Wait, is that, is that is that for your damage roll? I thought that was only for no, your attack roll. No, that's my attack. Oh, that was your attack? Okay. That's yeah. the wild die. Yep, no. yep. So you have to roll to see ah. if you miss or you overheat. It's, a, I think, a d6 where 1 through 3... Uh, no, wait. One through, yeah, 1 through 3 is a miss. 4 through 6 is overheat. a overheat. And I think it what takes two rounds for it to wear off. It takes how many, how many rounds? Uh, just, you roll one to d6 die, you don't add anything, it's just, uh, please be low. Oh, no! Are you I'm freaking so sorry. kidding me? Oh, ow, ow. <laughs> well, Basically, you were doing so no. well! The gun, no. um, I'm guessing is when I was putting in the clip, I put it in wrong, and when he tried to fire, you hear click, 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 click. And Anar will well. look at his, uh, gun is like, Last time this one buys at the bargain bin. 
me to start like hitting the dark. Well, like, well. This means I got to go melee. At least, uh, let me point out. At least this was a bonus turn for you anyway. So. Yeah, but I gotta wait two more turns. I know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe like, if I can find a gun on the ground or something, or find a melee <laughs> weapon, I can at least hit them in the head. There's a bunch of other C-Sec officers around. I'll, uh, I'll I'll figure it out as soon as it gets to my turn. Yeah. I'll do Elias. Right I'll let, yes. let Elias. Um, I'm actually changing what I was going to do, so, okay. Um, I'm going to activate my combat drone. It looks a little bit... Um, Disco ball? Uh, well, it looks a bit like a, uh, a red version of Glyph, actually. Yep. So it moves 12 clo towards the closest enemy. Or up to 12 towards the closest enemy. So do enemy. you want him to move um, right up to here? It, it's automatic, so it will go straight to the closest enemy, whatever, the, however close it needs to go. Does it want I it to be right next to it, or just within ra firing range of it? Yeah. Well, it will still well, advance. It's, it's, it's automatically programmed, so it will probably still advance towards the closest, nearest target. So, it says advance it, on the same. It, it it's going to go straight up to them, because um, also synthetic... Uh, someone who is a pure synthetic will try to attack the drone first above any other targets, so I figure, hey, why not send it in? <laughs> I'll have it move up to here. Yeah. I don't think I it think would be right, I don't think it would be right up on it. Yep. And uh, that'll go attack, so... Um, I'm not sure how the attack works either. Um, hovers up to 5 meters. I've got damage resistance 3 hit points, 10 stun damage, 2d. Targets must roll a stamina or strength to counter or be stunned for two rounds. I think I just roll 2D and then they have to roll against it. So I have to beat a 5. Yep. <laughs> I know. Oh well, I beat if it. nothing else, it's going to be a decoy. I beat it, so it does not get yeah. stunned. Okay? It's a decoy if nothing else, um, which is more what it's there for. Um, yeah. And I, and I guess I'm, I'm going to be saying... Uh, mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, please leave the auditorium. This is not part of the show. Repeat, <laughs> this is not part of the show. Okay. How right. calm and nonchalant you're saying that, at least. <laughs> yeah, surprising, isn't it? Okay. Husks. So, the husk over Ooh, here... You it. The husk over here... I really hope you use corning curse words. ...stabs the person through the seat here. He's gone. Um, Hark, uh, uh, do the husks count as synthetic? I believe so. They have to attack the combat drone then. Oh, they have to con attack the combat drone. Yeah, um, it says synthetics will attack the drone in preference. Ah. Um, in any case, all synthetics mm -hmm. will attack the drone first, and after they destroy it, will proceed to other targets. Makes Yay, sense. save the people. Makes sense. <laughs> the, the Volus over here... You know how Volus, you know, breathes? <laughs> So, the bros over here seems to exhaust from its mouth this orange smoke. And these people are managed to get out of the seats. Okay. Okay. So, it's starting to clear out, but not quite. People are start, still trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. Meanwhile, the CSEC officers. One, two, three, Yay. four, five, six. They come over here trying to position themselves so they don't hit the citizens. Um, I wish Chris one of the CSEC officers comes up to Elias and he says, and he says, Mr. Elias, please, we need to get you off the stage. Yes, I'm coming. Okay. For now. For now. I, need to get that stage. <laughs> I am, I am believe. Okay. I am thirsty oh, blood. Is that going to help his movement speed, having someone there basically kind of getting him off stage? One? I yeah. don't think it will help my movement speed, but it might help me not fall. <laughs> Which is also a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> getting to my sniper rifle is a good thing. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> we do want that. Back to sync. Is one of the officers right, going after the Krogan? Uh, you're sure it's gonna take some? Yes, I'm, I'm. Well, they said they are, but it's gonna take some time because they can't just yeah, jump up to the rafters. Yeah. Not five seconds <laughs> later. <laughs> not, not five seconds later. Yeah. Give them at least like I would say maybe within thirty seconds, but not five seconds. Gotcha. Teleport technology is invented again. <laughs> yes. You know what uh, I gotta give her an arm. No. 
Hell I'm gonna get no. twin gold holsters for his like pink body, so that way he has two pistols on him all the time. Sink, what are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna look down to my left arm and, and say, "Leave it up to a cop to screw everything up." Yeah. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start my, activating my my arm again. Roll so a what? mechanical minus. Whatever, minus three. Minus three? Plus three, yeah. I'll just roll a straight mechanical and then uh, subtract from that. Okay. Fourteen? Oh. Okay. That so that'll 14? be enough. No, not, sorry, eleven? Yeah, it's actually It's uh, actually so eleven? Long. Okay. Um, you will need to take one more round to finish activating your arm. Okay. okay one more round. Sorry. But during that round, Dylan, <laughs> during that round, Dylan, I'll let you do something passively like search or survey the area if you want to do that. Sure, okay. yeah. Just, um, I'll take a. That'll oh, be the next round. That'll be the next round. Sisepia, you're up. Um, I didn't have any other action. Um, oh, you didn't have any other actions. All right. Yeah, it was just the, it was just the search. Arkara, you're up. And you've aimed. I'll, uh, I've aimed and I'm going Okay. Uh, yes. Roll an attack roll. Does that mean she's gonna get a minus three every time she aims with that sniper rifle? Yep. Wow, that sucks. Welcome to sniper rifle, but they do do an insane amount of damage do, when you yeah. when you um do that. That's just why you take it. Even though it's the thing's calm. busting on me, I'll stick to my assault rifle. Well, the thing is, the sniper rifle, um, at least one of the, I don't know what she's got, but the one that I've got does an additional 4D if you aim it. I have the most basic one, I think. Yeah, the most uh, basic one. Yeah. So I don't know the stats I, it, though. Yeah, oh, 13. I forgot, you can fire it without aiming. Yes. 13. That will hit, Arkara. Roll your damage. Oh. That will hit. Oh, it's a hit. <laughs> I, I have a chance to sticks on that. My, my dice is rigged. My virtual dice. <laughs> it's okay, mine were rigged last round. So. Oh, wow. Hello. Okay, it didn't do as much damage, but it still did damage. Alright, you still, still, you still hurt him. Out, though. You still hurt him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Arkara, there's, you still have a movement speed if you want to move. Enjoy the boobies. And Sasepia, you had a movement speed too if you wanted to move. You don't have to move, but um, everyone gets a free movement speed at some point. Free movement? Well, considering I. How, uh, how many spaces would I go? How, what's your speed? Um, so your, speed? Your character has a speed. I believe for Turians it's like 10 or something. I think... Yeah, the for Turians it's 10. 10. Unless you add it, add it to it. That's your basic. No. Alright, so you can move 10 squares if you want to. Sweet, I'm pretty fast. However, um, if you move in the aisles... Uh, I would say if you moved in the aisles... I would say if you moved anywhere, you would have to, you'd be encumbered because there's people running around. Right. So right, you would only be it. able to move five squares. Mm. Which might be enough. It's up to you, otherwise I'm gonna move on. Arkara, do you know if you're moving or not? Uh, I don't think I would move. Okay, Sisepia, if you're... Noticed it. Sisepia, um, if you're moving, then yeah. go ahead and do that. Ooh, keep in mind, if you get shot, you might fall off. Right. <laughs> One, two... And our only took one. I think one. attack the uh, rafters. That'd be terrible as well. Um, terrible. How do I do the? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking I'll go probably up to up to here. That's fine. Is that as far oh, as you want to go? I go three, four. All right, that's, that's it. Done. That's it. Okay, that'll work. Okay, Elias, it's Rad. your next turn in this round. Um. Well, I will take both my free move and my move action as my second move. Okay. For the second action. So, I'm gonna so go you're going one. back to your dressing room. Yep. Three, four, five. Six, Gotta get that makeup off. Eight. So I'm somewhere over there. Yeah, yeah. Curse. That's fine. You're somewhere Body over there. I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. Okay. The Volus and the people. <laughs> this Volus over here is searching to see if it can determine who shot at it. Because I don't think it was anticipating that anyone would be. Who shot at this? <laughs> Lord, 
looking around. It spends. It doesn't find Arkara, therefore it spent its entire round looking for Arkara and not attacking anyone. Nice. Um, Watch out, they might be my out of gods. The, the um, people who were these citizens as they're going through the smoke, they start to cough, and several of the citizens as they're going through collapse on the ground. Um, oh. The people within, who are already within the smoke collapse, coughing. Oh no, they had tacos. These people start to get out of their I'm kind of glad that I've got an Enviro suit now, even though I'm going to be away. <laughs> I'm glad I am wearing a really cool outfit. And I do have a respirator. We're all set! Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the croaking could take a lot of um, horrible smells, considering where she's from. Mm -hmm. mm. This one moves over here and kills that citizen. This one moves uh, over here. Yeah, that however, citizen. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. How's the Septia gonna go? Uh, probably not uh, close to them. <laughs> I'll just keep my distance and use my biotics. Dude, yeah, throw them in singularity. You, get them we, in a we ball. Have a biotic god. Yeah, singularity them. <laughs> that's why. I'm, that's why I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to get close to them. Oh, uh, that's you gonna be like our go-to ability. Singularity, the me and a car just pump them full of lead. <laughs> Pretty much. C-Sec will try and to fire. And then you guys will I'll do whatever you I'll do best. I'll distract them. <laughs> I just yes. distract them. You guys shoot them, but we're spray. I love it. Several of the C-Sec officers fire. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. Five, including the one on stage. So the one on stage moves over here. Actually, the one on stage would have been escorting you. He would have made yeah, sure that you were fine. Oh, cool. So four CSEC officers rolling. One, two, three. Um, and uh, all four of them hit. So they're gonna all four of them are gonna roll damage. That's they're my not man. Stormtroopers. Yeah, Yay. That's a, they, you trained them well, soldier. <laughs> One. I know what you're three, capable of. Three, I've seen you fight. Four. Back to sync. This is a new round, right? This oh. is the new round. Fair. So, we which roll means... Initiative again, or do we just leave it? I'm sorry? Do we roll initiative each round, or no. do we just keep initiative? You keep initiative. So, starting with cool. Dylan, how many actions do you want to take this round? Okay, I'll just, I'll just take one, because I'm yes. turning my orb back on. Yeah, right? you, you have to, okay. yes. But you, I will let you search on your turn. And you can still move if you want to move. So, okay. Sepia, okay. how many actions you are you taking this turn, cover. this round? <laughs> Um, I think I will might do two, probably activate a Singularity. I think, you know, the range on that is like, uh, this is 10 meters for every die in Biotic Antribute. Okay. But you said you're going to uh, probably... Uh, the target has to be in line of sight. But you said you're going to take two actions, correct? Yeah, and then I'll probably, maybe, maybe I could do like a warp. Okay. <laughs> Arkara, how many actions are you going to take? Um, I'm going to take two again. Okay. Anar, how many are you going to take? Um... Knowing that your thing is overheated. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm supposed to have a knife, but I didn't buy one. Crap. My suit is seriously You're going to have to... You're going to have to improvise. Uh, there's a C sec. I'll probably call out to it for its weapon, and then I'll have to figure out what I'll do from there if I can. Probably, get it. you'll probably. You might have to use your persuasion then. I will. Persuade it's actually not bad. Persuade an officer. Elias, to him. Him or... Elias, how many actions do you want to take? Uh, question. Mm -hmm. Are the wings the wings are made out of cloth? So these things, they cloth. The like curtains things? are made of cloth. Yes. Awesome. I will take two actions. Okay. All right. Starting with sink. First action okay. sync, you are All right. activating your arm again. And I'll just move closer to the rafter. I'll crouch down behind the balcony. Know, holes. Yeah. The walls of the box, yeah. Roll I'll, up. Uh, okay, roll with. Roll a search if you're doing that. I like to think okay. Sync's nickname is Faucet. Is that. <laughs> Faucet. Is that up to or Kitchen, yeah. or call him Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Dylan, what did you say? Just a regular, I'll just roll a regular perception. I'm trying to find, well, I mean, it's kind of, I'm just trying to see where I can jump down off the, off the balcony. R roll me a search mm. first. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. I got trench coat flung With in the air. With a 10 sink, 
You believe. You do notice the rafters here. You believe that you can get to those rafters relatively easily with your grappling hook. Ah, uh, okay. You also notice that this CSEC officer over here looks like he has a... Um, he's got a... Right now he's wielding an assault rifle, mm -hmm. but he also seems to have some sort of handgun or pistol on his holster, which you believe you might be able to grab with your grappling hook. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh. oh, we're going to buy on a commando this. However, the difficulty of picking his pocket is going to be significantly harder than than grabbing onto the rafters here, and also, but not as hard, but not as difficult as merely snatching the weapon, the assault rifle that's in his hand. Ah, okay. Don't you have um, uh, some biotics too? I do. Okay. That might be a good go-to thing. Sisepia. Mm -hmm. yep. So, your first action. Okay. Um, I am going to activate the singularity. Um, singularity. Okay. So, so for right now, I'm just going to use the shape, the circle shape, so I know what's in it. So okay, that'll yep. grab all three of them. <laughs> well, they have to make the strength to. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I have to beat what? That's Seventeen. Have to beat your Seventeen. That's going to be tough to beat. Fail! 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 Fail. All three fail. Okay, so they're, cool, they're all in the air. They're all in the air, okay. Now we can just and their auras come with them. Quick, stop right. throwing a grenade! <laughs> Don't have any! Oh, I don't so, have grenade skills, that's what I'm gonna use next. I actually, I actually do have a grenade, but it's a gas grenade. Oh, <laughs> they got their suits won't These be like offices, where's your shrapnel grenades? <laughs> I mean, I mean, oh, why didn't I, I grab the incendiary grenades from the fridge when I left? I imagine a Good gas job. grenade would make sense as a cop, so <laughs> that's why I bought them. Yeah, no, that, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Sisepia has successfully um, I'll get grenades later. incapacitated, at least temporarily, the three Volus there. Arkara, you just saw, you just saw, um... <laughs> My tar her target. Her target, you just saw her target do this. It's your, your next. <laughs> Well, I was aiming at it, so... Well, folks. I guess I'll just sh shoot the same one that I did last time. Okay. You might want to pick off the ones that are heading towards the stage. And, and yes, keep in mind that the ones that you're shooting sure. at has... The, the smoke is causing a concealment, yeah, well, so it's the, harder. Yeah, of course. It, that's the thing as well. Which where is the smoke now? Then, I guess. Yeah. Actually, would Akara even care about these civilians, just out of curiosity? That's up to her. <laughs> That's up to her. <laughs> she gets to decide that. Um, uh, if those um, down um, there were concealed by before, I think I would have probably aimed for one of the... I think I would have a better line of sight to that one, so I'm probably yeah. going to fire at that one. Yeah. Concealed on feel, Akara. <laughs> <laughs> Conceal them. <laughs> Don't let them know. <laughs> oh no, no I'm gonna have enough of stuff. It's fine. Alright, so 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 you're aiming for the, the one over here, correct? Yes, that's the okay. one. Um So I can fire I guess. Well that was aiming is your first action. Yeah, it's my first action. Uh, sorry. So so, so we're going yeah. to un yeah, so we're going to Anar. Okay, um, after realizing his gun has um, effectively overheated, he's going to be looking around frantically inside his cockpit, leaning forward, looking around. He'll spot that uh, C-Sec, like uh, two squares away from him, Yep. and he'll reach out his free hand while holding up the other gun up high, and he'll call out to him in his augmented voice. <clears throat> Give this one your assault rifle if you wish to live. Throw uh, yes. Uh, roll a persuasion. <laughs> roll a persuasion. C six officer through the face. <laughs> uh, that is plus six. Correct. <sighs> wow, well done. Oh, oh, are yeah. you serious? Oh, yeah. Again? Yes. Wow. Oh my. So 
So here's one thing. Here's a house a rule. Real life and a bad rolling in virtual reality. That's, that's okay. So 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 here is a house rule. I'm gonna homebrew this. You can cancel out any critical failure by spending a paragon or renegade point. Ah. I need to kill these things. I can't. You I guys start with the... two. You guys start with four. Yes. Yeah, we start four. Yeah. With, uh... All right. Because I am demanding a police officer to hand over his weapon to a civilian, I'm gonna go with renegade. So All right. I'll send a rel renegade. Well, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, but I guess if you're thinking it's about fine, it, just flavor wise. Play. Yeah, right, role play wise, he's just flavor. Yeah. Yet. So, yeah. all right. So you canceled out that you canceled out the botch, and the the um, seasick officer. Uh, this one, he will also add. This one implores you. It, it, it is the only <laughs> way. Yeah. I, I, I kind of I think that's fair because he's botching... radiating confidence with like this red glow to signify his renegadeness and like maybe the C tech like <gasps> it's like intimidated. Well, I... it's, you have to roll a resistance check against that. Wouldn't you? Remember, I have a big fat mech hand sticking out towards him. He, he no, like like I'm I'm just setting a difficulty, and so yep. uh, Jeff met the difficulty. So okay. the C tech officer uh, it looks very confused, but in the heat of the moment. Uh, because of all the people, all the citizens that have been dying already, and so he tosses you the assault rifle. So now you have you have. Um, let me let me tell hey, you which assault rifle it is. Uh, so that means Dylan I, can't, doesn't have an option to. Uh, I'm not gonna add it to my repertoire because I'm probably gonna I, give it back afterwards. That's okay. Just uh, for simplicity's sake, assume that the assault rifle he gave you has the same stats as the assault rifle that you normally. Use. Standard Avenger does sound appropriate. Yeah, just yeah. use well, it's just to keep things simple. So you have the same; it has the same stats. And then he pulls out the handgun from his holster. 